Welcome back to the channel. My name is Tyler and this is Tech with Tyler. And today we're going to be learning how to pick parts for your PC build. Now it's important to make sure that you pick the right parts that fit in your budget that are going to perform the best for your use case. And that's the first step, making sure that we build a PC that fits your use case. Are you a video editor? Are you a gamer? Are you going to be doing CAD design? These are all things that you want to make sure that you know before picking your parts. In this case, if you're going the video editing or gaming route, you're going to want to stick with a card from NVIDIA, probably in the RTX line. If you're a CAD designer, you might want to go Quadro. These are all things to think about before building your PC. The next thing you're going to want to think about is the budget. Another thing that's very important when building your PC. Are you going to be in the mid, low, or high end of the PC spectrum? If you are building a gaming PC or video editing rig, you're going to want to make sure that your graphics card is powerful. For this reason, I recommend about a 30% spend on your graphics card. Now, if you're doing stuff that's more CPU intensive, and you can find that out by Googling whether or not the software you use is CPU or GPU intensive. If it's more CPU intensive, you can opt to spend a little more on the CPU. If it's more GPU intensive, you can go for a more powerful GPU. These are all cool things that you can do when building your PC as you're not limited to what's inside the rig already. You can kind of choose what you need for your specific use case. Once you've got a budget in mind, you can then pick your parts based on that. Like I said, 30% on the graphics card, you match your graphics card to your CPU. So if you're going for a high-end graphics card, I would recommend a higher end CPU just to match it up. But if you're going for a mid-tier lower end graphics card, match it up with a mid-tier lower end CPU. This way you don't really get a bottleneck in either one. From my personal recommendations, I'd stick to the RTX line of graphics cards for most use cases, just because AMD has some issues with drivers and it's gonna be a little bit easier to get going on the Nvidia side. For CPU, it's kind of a toss up between Intel and AMD, although sometimes you're gonna get a bit more performance for your money on the AMD side, and they tend to have more sales from what I've seen. Before we begin picking the parts, let's just talk about what we'll need so you have a running list of all the components that you'll need to buy. Number one, CPU. Number two, motherboard. Number three, GPU. Number four, memory. Number five, SSD. Number six, power supply. Number seven, case. Number eight, fans. And number nine, potentially a CPU cooler. Now, if you're starting from scratch and you don't have any accessories, you'll probably want to factor that into your budget as well as it's going to eat up some costs. Another thing to note is that when you're picking your accessories, let's say you have an existing monitor or you're going to buy a monitor and you want to play games, let's say, you're going to want to make sure your GPU is strong enough for the monitor you have. You don't want your monitor to be a bottleneck or your GPU. So in the case that you're gaming at 1080p, you can get away with a cheaper graphics card. And if you're going up to, you know, 2K or 4K, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your graphics card can run the games um, that you're playing on that monitor. An easy way to do this is to go to the game's website just to see the recommended specs. Now that we know what our use case is and our budget, let's go ahead and get into the part picking. All right, so we're on the desktop. We're on pcpartpicker.com, and this is the site I like to use to choose my parts. In the top right, you can choose your country and shop in your own currency. I'm in Canada, so I'll leave that selected. And um, what's nice about this website is it's gonna give you the parts that are compatible with the other parts that you're buying. And let's say you choose a CPU like, actually, let's say you choose a motherboard, for example. And let's say we, we choose an Intel motherboard and we choose a CPU. It's only gonna give you stuff that's compatible with the, with the stuff that you already have in your cart. So I'm not going to go Intel on this build. Actually, I'm going to choose my CPU and we're going to go Ryzen. Um, our budget for this build that I'm giving, it's an arbitrary budget is let's say 1750. So we're going to want to stay within that budget and that's Canadian. So let's just check what 1750 Canadian is to USD about $1,280. So that's a pretty good budget. Um, we'll see if we can stick within it and uh, get some decent parts while we're at it. So in terms of CPU, we're going to look at the probably the Ryzen 7 uh, series, which is mid range. You've got Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, uh, and then Ryzen 9. 
Ryzen 9 being the top end. Um, and then on top of that, you have this number after, which signifies the generation and the submodel. So the, the five is the previous gen, and then the seven, you'll notice there's a seven here, 7,600. That would be the current gen. What happened is AMD changed the architecture in the newest gen. So these ones are gonna be, uh, if you're getting something like this, you're gonna get DDR5 uh, as well as some other stuff. But uh, to stay within the budget and get good graphics performance, I think we're gonna go Ryzen 7 5800X if we can. So this is the 3D 5900X. That's the Ryzen 9 for 359. The 600, that's the Ryzen 5. So let's go ahead and choose AMD only. And there it is. So 248, it's a really good price. I think you're gonna get decent performance out of that. Um, so now that we got our processor, let's go to the motherboard. And it's only showing us motherboards that are compatible with our current chosen motherboard. On the left, I'm gonna choose to select motherboards that have Wi-Fi um, down here. So I'm gonna choose all the Wi-Fi options just so that we have Wi-Fi on the board. And then I'm gonna sort it uh, price sorted by price and I'm going to choose something that seems good. It's important to note that the difference in form factor here will depend, will kind of depict what kind of case you can get. So if you go micro ATX, you'll be good on any board pretty much, on any case pretty much. But if you're going ATX, you're going to want a mid tower or a full tower. We're going to do a mid tower build, um, just the average the middle of the line in terms of size. I think it's fine. Um, I do think 189 gigabyte B550 Aorus. So this is nice. This is a nice board. And then the other thing too is we can always upgrade to that i9 or the Ryzen 9 if we need to. Um, if we feel like we need a little bit more performance. Um, don't know if we need this board though. Let's check if we get something for a better deal. B550 UD, Asus Prime Plus. So this one doesn't have any heat sink on the, it's got one M.2 slot, two M.2 slots, but no heat sink. So I do want a heat sink on my M.2 slot. So I'm gonna go with this one for now, this Gigabyte B550 Aorus, and this one has Wi-Fi, so we'll be good for Wi-Fi uh, if we want it. And then now I'm gonna go down and pick our video card. For our video card, we're gonna go with um, an RTX card. AMD is great and all, but I do believe that, let's see, can we choose? There's gotta be a way to choose. I think we're gonna go 4070, eh, 4070 Super, one of those. So um, AMD is great and all, but the drivers are sometimes cause problems. So we're not gonna go with that. We're gonna go with the GeForce RTX card. I do see this one 759. Let's rate this price. Okay, so let's go by price. Another thing to note is that we wanna make sure that our GPU is gonna fit in our case, which it should. Um, there's this 4070 here for 759. Another for 779, 789. Let's go with, uh, what do we have here? Founders Edition, 739, 738. We'll get a little bit better performance on an aftermarket card. So let's try, let's go with this, uh, the Ventus 3X. Let's go with the Ventus. So now that we got all those three, we can see, warning, these parts have potential issues. So this is nice about this site. Um, we can see the details. Saying AMD Ryzen 7 does not include a stock CPU cooler. So we do need a CPU cooler. And we also need to update the BIOS with this motherboard. So that's something you can look at. And um, it's nice that this tells you what's going on with your build. So we're gonna keep this for now and um, we can actually see an estimated watch at wattage, which is cool. Anyways, um, let's grab a cooler since we need one. Uh, in this case, we can go with something that's not too crazy. Actually, before we build the, 
before we pick the cooler, let's go ahead and pick a case so that we know what we're dealing with. I do like cases that are got some glass on the side. We have a lot of options here. I'm going to go in the 100 to 150 range in terms of pricing. This one looks pretty nice, actually. This NZXC H6. I don't like that, actually. I don't like that angled wall. Um, Lian Lee Vision is a nice case. NZXT H5 Flow. This is a good price, actually, too. Two fans there. Three up the top. Okay, let's go with this one. So a case is also personal preference, so you can get something that you like. We're going to go with that one. Now let's choose our cooler. Make sure we get a cooler that fits in that case. I think we can go three or two on the rad, um, depending on, I'm not sure actually. I believe, it, I believe it's only two and it's gonna be on the front. But if you do wanna take a look, you can see if we go back actually, our case will say what it supports. You can take a look. I think you can fit three 120s there. Definitely two 140s here. Um, so anyways, does it say compatibility here? It's nice you can see some pics, pics of it with, with builds. It says here on the left, actually on the left you'll see here uh, what kind of motherboard form factors it, su it supports. So let's pick a cooler. We're gonna go with the so we have options for coolers. We can go with a, we can go with air cooled or liquid cooled. Um, in this case, I think I'm going to go with an all in one just because uh, I like the look of it. Uh, we can stick with NZXT, but that's pretty pricey. Deep cool, deep cool 101 for this guy here. NZXT Kraken 194. Corsair IQ, 200 range. Let's go with that deep cool. I think we're gonna go with the deep cool. Wherever it is, let's go find it. Right here, 101, good price. Um, I think the reviews were pretty decent. Let's see if there's any builds with it. Wow, okay, not too bad. Um, we'll go with that. And then we'll go back. So now that we got all that in there, we can see a total, I, I believe, somewhere. 1439, we have a little bit more budget to use. Might not be able to do 1750. We'll be, we'll might have to shift some stuff around. Let's go with this Corsair Vengeance. Uh, save a bit on the RAM actually. Let's go with, we need probably, I'm gonna say 16. 32 is probably better. 92 bucks. 79 bucks. Hmm. 94 bucks. Let's do it with the team group stuff. Um, so here we can save some money on the SSD. I think this is actually a pretty good drive, I believe. Samsung Evo. Cache. Let's see the speeds. Does it have speeds? PCI 4. And this is also up to preference depending on what you're doing, but um, I think we're going to go with that one right now. Let's see our compatibility issues rise in and the gigabyte. So we need to make sure we might switch our, 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 uh, Might switch out our motherboard in the future. Uh, so we're at 1664.91, and all that's left to do is a power supply. So we're gonna want probably around 850 watts of power. We've got, we wanna make sure we get everything 80 plus gold, I'd say. Bronze is okay, and platinum's just a little overkill, I think. But um, I think we're good with. 850 watts at 80 plus gold. This looks like to be a decent price, 155.99. There's also an MSI one here for a little bit cheaper if we want to save some money. 
take a look. The reviews are pretty good. It is modular. This is something to note when you're looking at power supplies. You want to make sure it's modular so it's easier for your build. You don't have a bunch of wires everywhere. I think I'm going to go with this one here that we just looked at for 129. I think we're done. So we're at 17.94. So we're actually 50 bucks over our budget. So we can save that in a few different areas. We can choose a cheaper SSD, maybe 16 gigs of RAM opposed to 32. Um, but another way we can do is change the motherboard to something cheaper. Instead of that one, we can go with maybe one that's around 120, just to save a bit of money. We can do maybe this gigabyte board. It's not as fancy, doesn't have um, any heat sinks or anything. But that would save us some money here and uh, allow us to kind of fit our budget. Let's try adding that one here. Let's add that one instead. And our budget's now $17.70, so $20 difference. So when I was editing this video, I noticed that I forgot to add case fans for cooling of our PC. So we're going to have to do that. Uh, definitely an important step. And I'm glad I actually leave it at the end here for you guys because um, you definitely don't want to forget about this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go, actually, another thing that's funny is the price is now $15.48. I did change the motherboard that we're using, so that's going to save us some money there. But um, some stuff might be also on sale this week, so that could be the reason for the lower price. But anyways, uh, I'm going to click on the case first, and this is what you're going to want to do. You want to go to your case. Make sure what the case has in terms of space for fans. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go to Newegg just to see the specs of the case uh, in more detail. I'm going to just close this and go to the specs section. And we're going to scroll down until we see cooling. Okay, cool. So on the front, we've got space for two 120s or two 140s. And then the top can take two 120s. The rear is included and the bottom single fan is included. So actually there's a bottom fan here. Might be hard to see. It sits in that little crevice there on an angle. So that's gonna give us more, um, more airflow from the front slash bottom. And then we'll also get that one included at the top on the rear. So realistically, we have a radiator fan setup that's included on the all-in-one. And that's going to take up two, two spots. And then we also have the two fans that are included. So we only really realistically need two fans uh, to complete the airflow. But if you'd like to have uniformity in your fans, you can also just replace all of them with the same fans. But in this case, I'm going to go to case fans at the bottom there. Then I'm going to go to the bottom and find two packs because we only need two. And then we're going to need Hmm, 120s. So here's some 120s. And in this case, the thermal takes or the Corsair IQs. I think for the difference in price, I'll go with the Corsairs. 40 bucks. And now we have two fans there. And our price is only $15.89. Still below budget now that we've made those changes. Um, we can add more fans to get the RGB going in the case. Or we can, you know, spend a little more on that motherboard or upgrade some of the other parts if we'd like to hit that budget and get something um, a little bit better. I hope that I helped you pick your parts for your PC. This is a very easy process on PCPartPicker.com and it helps a lot with uh, planning out your build and making sure that you get the, the best deal on all your parts as they work with all the different stores and find you the best price uh, between Amazon, UAG, Canada Computers and so forth. So that leaves us to the end of the video. I'm glad you guys watched. And if you stuck through till the end, I really appreciate it. If you could also hit that subscribe button and uh, stay tuned for a build coming up as I actually built my sister's PC not long ago and filmed that. Just got to edit the video and that should be posted up soon. I'll also leave the link to this build on my description below in the video. And you can also get all these parts yourself if you like and build this PC and let me know how it goes. Thanks.